Once again, my name is America Garcia. I am the Texas Program Director at Solar United Neighbors, or SUN, and I'm here to cover solar technology and economics. This information will help you understand the process of going solar and how our organization works in this space. Today, I am joined by my colleague. Please go ahead. Hi, y'all. My name is Trinity. My pronouns are they, them, theirs. I help out uh, in Texas along with a few other states at Solar United Neighbors. Beautiful. Hopefully, I won't have any problems with getting everything and that it stays on the screen. So a couple of questions, a couple of things that I wanted to go over first. First, this webinar is being recorded. Second, please submit your questions in the chat and definitely join the audio so that you can hear. Hopefully by now, everybody has done the first at least. Today, we're gonna cover the solar technology, solar economics, how solar works as well. We already did the introductions. Solar United Neighbors is a 501c3 profit based out of Washington, D.C. We help people go solar, join together, and fight for their energy rights. And we're a national organization with staff all over the country. We also offer bulk pur purchasing programs in 11 states, D.C. and Puerto Rico. And since the, our start in 2007, we've helped thousands of people go solar. This is our theory of change. First, we go solar. So that means right now we're learning and we're getting educated on what solar is like. I apologize for that. Second, we join together. And three, we fight for our energy rights. Sun began in 2007 with the Mount Pleasant Solar Co-op in Washington, DC. Walter on the left is the son of the executive director, Anya. He and his friend Diego wanted to go solar. Anya looked into it and quickly found out that going solar was not so easy at the time. The so Walter and Diego went door to door around the neighborhood and signed up 50 neighbors that were interested in working together to untangle this complicated process. After many meetings, research, and coordination, 45 neighbors in that first solar, first group, excuse me, went solar. And after that, Anya began receiving calls from people nationwide wanting to organize similar groups. This is our direct impact in Texas, and I'm very excited about the amount of jobs that we've created. We've created 55 solar jobs. We've invested $9.1 in local solar. 326 people have gone solar with us. And over 25 years, we estimate an energy savings of $17.4 million. And before we get into the presentation, I want to take a moment to address the inequities in our current energy system. Communities of color, particularly the Black community, bear an unfair share of the cost of energy production, but receive fewer benefits, higher utility bills and disconnections, disproportionately harm families of color. On top of that, housing discrimination is a barrier to home ownership and thus solar ownership. When Sun started with a group of economically and racially diverse neighbors, they focused on solar because it helped people pay their bills at the time. It also helped help them stay in their homes when DC was being gentrified quickly and the entire country was in the middle of a financial crisis. Rooftop solar lets communities invest locally, creates good local jobs, and brings control of the energy system within our reach. We're working toward a new energy system that everyone can participate in, one that's fair and equitable. Today, we're gonna to go over the solar technology, economics, and going solar together. Photovoltaic technology converts light energy into usable electricity. The majority of today's solar market is PV technology. Solar thermal is another residential solar technology. That would be for heating a pool or for directly heating your home's hot water, but it is a small percentage of today's market. 
A solar panel is constructed of silicon cells and is surrounded by layers on either side to protect it from the elements and make it rigid so that it can be mounted securely. The silicon cells convert the sun's light into electricity. The panels are connected to the roof through a racking system. Racking systems come in a variety of types that allow solar installers to connect a solar array to just about any building or ground location. One of the most common roofing types is asphalt shingle. For this roof type, attachments are made to the rafters of your home through the roof and then waterproof to prevent leaks through flashings. Specialized compression sealant attachments and those attachments provide the base for aluminum rails and then the panels are bolted on top of those rails. Here's another type of roofing system. This is a standing seam metal roof that shows the use of clamps to attach to the roof seams and then the racking sits on top of that. And if you were to have the space and your local permitting laws allow it, Putting solar on the ground is a great option. The panels can be pointed directly south and benefit from better airflow beneath them to maximize energy production. Ground mount systems often cost a little more because of the additional materials and the need for trenching the wires underground back to your home. Not all installers offer ground mounts. Solar inverters are the brains of your solar array. They convert the electricity coming from the panels into a form your house can use. They also allow you to see energy production from the solar array and how it performs over time because inverters report that information to an online monitoring app that you can access. There are a few different kinds of inverters. Three inverters on the left are a single unit. They control many panels. Micro inverters are smaller and get attached behind each panel to control it individually. And optimizers plus string inverters are a sort of combination of the two. Your installer recommend the type they feel is best for your home, depending on things like how much shade there is. And shade can greatly impact how much energy your home, excuse me, your system will produce. Micro inverters and optimizers are often recommended when there is a potential for intermittent shade. It's important to have space on the electrical circuit breaker excuse me, on the circuit breaker panel in order to have solar. Some homes have a capacity, but some panels do need to be upgraded before getting solar panel. The installer will wanna know if you have this set up in order to get a proposal, and they'll let you know if you need an upgrade, and the price is something that we do get through this co-op process. Now for some terminology. Kilowatts are what the system is measured in. 1,000 watts are the equivalent of one kilowatt. Kilowatt hour is the production of a solar array and how it's measured. Your electricity bill has the amount of kilowatt hours consumed. And if you add the yearly consumption, that information is used to determine the suggested size and a proposal that you would get from an installer. The average size of the system in Texas is six to seven kilowatts. And it's based on how much you consume now and what you plan to do in the future or other factors such as roof size, budget, and keep in mind, that you can also choose to add panels in the future. So here are the main components, the solar array, the inverter, the electric panel, and the meter. We're tied to the meter in the event that you aren't home and aren't using so much electricity, the electrons can go back into the grid and help out the grid along with your neighbors. Excess solar generation is what you produce that you don't consume and that you send back into the grid. Unfortunately, Texas does not require companies to offer net metering. Net metering is when you are basically receiving the same amount of credit as you are paying the energy company. Some companies, retail electricity providers, do have buyback programs for surplus generation. So this is what your bill could potentially look like. I do believe this would be a bill in your area. 
excuse me, I apologize. This is a bill from El Paso. I am so sorry about that. Your bill will look a little bit different because El Paso is not in deregulated Texas. So I will work on getting a slide that's appropriate for this. My apologies. But let's discuss what a good roof for solar looks like. It has little to no shading. It's oriented west to east, and it has enough space to mount the panels. Your installer can help you determine this. Batteries are a component that can be added to your system. During winter storm Yuri, the people who had power were those with batteries. During an outage, the solar panels cannot provide power, even if it is sunny, because we cannot backfeed electricity to the grid. It's dangerous for the workers on the grid that are trying to bring it back online. You may want storage if you live in an area with frequent outages or rolling blackouts, but also if you have important loads at home, such as medical equipment or well pumps, but also during emergencies and disaster preparedness. We have a guide to help you determine whether a battery is right for you at this link here. Here's an example of a person who has solar and a battery. This particular family loses power several times a year, and each time the power is out, it's out for the entire day. What they do run when the power is out is the refrigerator, the microwave, some lights and outlets, the cable modem, and a small window air conditioner. What they choose not to power are bigger loads such as an electric stove, a dryer, and a water heater. A few of the frequently asked questions that we receive. In regard to warranties, solar installations come with three types of warranties. Panels, the manufacturer's warranty for the equipment, which covers defects for panels and the inverter. And those can vary depending on the type of panel and inverter but they're typically about 10 to 25 years. The second type of warranty is power production warranty. And that typically guarantees panels will produce at a certain level later in its lifespan. The third type is the labor warranty from the installer. And in the event they made a mistake when weatherizing the roof and you have a leak, the labor warranty covers this type of situation. These are typically five to 10 years, sometimes longer. Please let your homeowner's insurance that you have obtained a system and ensure that solar array because you have just made a large investment. For the most part, your solar array is low maintenance and you can also ask the installer to come and check on it. Systems last under warranty to produce for about 25 years but systems can and do last longer than that. Housing um, homeowners associations and property owners associations cannot prohibit or restrict a property owner from installing a solar energy device according to Texas Tax Code 171-107. Additionally, you will not be taxed on the additional value you've added to the home by installing a solar array. You may need permission from the HOA and they may request that you move the array north to where it affects the output more than 10%, but that also is not permitted. Historic districts may need to be informed about the addition of solar to the home, but they also cannot say no. And in regards to hail, I have definitely known people that tell me that they had a hailstorm at their home and that their panels and their roof are completely fine, precisely because the panels are sturdy. Solar is a great investment as costs have dropped significantly, and you also get a 30% federal tax credit that can be spread out over several years if you wish to do so, or if you do not have the sufficient tax liability. We work to make solar more accessible by educating people and by connecting you to the installer and lowering the soft costs in the process by doing a group bid. Although the tax credit may be spread out over several years, 
In 2033, the tax credit drops to 26% and then 22% in 2034. The Inflation Reduction Act, also known as the IRA, offers tax credits on the following battery storage, electric vehicles, electric heat pumps, electric stoves, electrical panel upgrade. And here's an example of some cash pricing that we might see on an average of 275 a watt for a seven kilowatt um, system, you would be looking at 19250 With the federal income tax credit of 5775 your net cost would be 13475 Estimated year one electricity savings are about 1600 Estimated 10-year savings are about 17000 And at 25 years, your estimated savings are at 48 thousand dollars, meaning that your net profit is $34,561. Keep in mind that this is example pricing only. Actual size and price will vary based on the installer's pricing, roof space, your budget, your electrical panel, and of course, if you were to finance your system, like shown here. How much and when you use electricity matters. Keep in mind that you can offset some of your usage, but you don't need to offset 100% of your electricity consumption. Some financing options can be found through the installer or on your own, a home equity line of credit, refinancing, and including the solar system, excuse me, array, installer financing, a clean energy credit union or community first credit union. And you can also go to solarunitedneighbors.org slash financing. This is how our co-ops work. So why would you join a solar co-op? You do get the best value on installation. As I stated earlier, we do work to lower some of the cost by doing a group bid. You do get support from Sun throughout this entire process you get to become a part of a growing solar movement. The solar co-op process looks a little bit like this. From months one to two, people will attend a free solar co-op info session such as this. You can become a member for free and there is no obligation to move forward. You spread the word, you invite your neighbors and friends to join. In month three, we'll select the installer. Once the co-op has 30 members, the installer will be chosen by members of the selection committee. Solar United Neighbors will then issue a competitive request for proposal for solar installers on behalf of the co-op. We review bids and check references. And then the members will review the bids and select one installer. From months four to eight, you'll have your sign-up deadline, your specific proposal. You'll sign a contract if you choose to move forward an install, and then we have a big party. So what is next? You are going to go to solarunitedneighbors.org slash Plano, I believe. Hernity, is that correct? That is correct. And I've put the link in the chat as well. Beautiful. I apologize for the typo, but I am also doing a co-op in El Paso as of right now, and we actually just chose the installer, so I'm very excited about that. If you were to have any questions, you can reach us at txteam at slowunitedneighbors.org. Does anybody have any questions? Great question. So what happens to the electric energy produced when it's not consumed or sent back to the grid? Um, so with how your solar array is connected to your uh, electrical panel, one or the other will happen. You'll either consume it on site immediately or it'll be sent to the grid through your meter. Okay. 
Beautiful. Thank you for that. Do we have any other questions? Keep in mind, there are plenty of links in the chat. If someone has excess generation for the whole month, does the excess roll over? That is a great question. It depends on the rate plan you have. Um, different plans will have different rules, so it's something to look into. Um, I will also drop a link to the Texas Power Guide. They're a great organization. Um, and let me check America. Does the Texas Power Guide reach Plano? Yes. Perfect. Um, so they're an awesome organization with courtesy of Sun. You can get a free analysis to see which plans would be best for your consumption. So let me go ahead and drop that link real quick. Um, so some plans, it'll roll over each month and sometimes it's annual. So usually it'll either be monthly or annual if there is a buyback. Um, unfortunately, net metering is not required. Um, so it does depend on the provider. These are excellent questions. Do we have any other questions? I think that's going to be a no. I'm really excited to see who's going to sign up. Remember, there is no obligation to move forward and it is completely free. So please spread the word with your neighbors, with your friends, with your family, with your coworkers, because typically the bigger that the group is, the more enticing it is for solar installers. Perfect. I think that we can get everything wrapped up. Thank you all so, so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Please send us any questions if you have them. And once again, once again my name is America Garcia.